Okay, Sunday, here we are again. Um, not going to do any painting though. So um, what we've got is a couple different things that we need to do. We already, uh, we finished up the uh, gala glass this morning and uh, we've given them a flat spray and a, a, a gloss spray and a flat spray. So we're waiting for that to dry right now completely and then we'll... Uh, We'll do some brush on on there as well but here they are we're going to go ahead and pull these guys off and um this is just a clipboard i normally use to spray them on in the garage and um, they'll be good to go then we can go ahead and do the basing for them later okay this today but um yeah i finished the last two figures and these guys are all completely done all right um and i don't know if i could do a group shot on them well they're going to look like crap on this video for whatever reason um but here are the three stands of the blades Finished up the last two this morning. And there they are. Three stands of blades for the gala glass. So yeah, last two guys were painted from 5 a.m. till about 9 a.m. So they are completely done. Sleepings for sissies. Hey Mike, how are you doing? Uh, let me see if I can get this silly thing to zoom back out. There we go. All right, so um, so then when I was done with the gala glass, I figured, okay, well, while uh, I'm waiting for these guys to spray, let me go through my nights and pick out my nights for my Scott's uh, Night General. And after doing a preliminary check, looks like I'm probably going to have to order them. Damn it! So, um... Somebody was asking me on one of the other posts if I was going to do the Knights or the Pikeman next. And I, so I guess it's going to be the Pikeman. So um, once some um, went and did some errands and came by, and I figured this would be an opportunity to show you to see how I replace the pikes. Now, normally I wouldn't be replacing the pikes on these figures. But uh, what happened is um, in picking these out yesterday, two of the pikes broke. So... I'm not thrilled of how I'm going to have to drill them out because they they go really close to the body of the figure, but we're going to um, we're going to do that live and see if uh, because some people have asked me what I do for pikes, so I went ahead and did that. So these are uh, pins that I got from the uh, fabric store, and um, there's 40 pieces of them. These are two inch long ones, and with a 40% off coupon that they ha have electronically all the time. This was like less than $3 for 40 of them. So we'll show you what I do with that. And uh, we'll pick out the eight guys that we're gonna do for this. So um, I am gonna go ahead and, and, like I said, I preliminary looked to make sure that I didn't have the, the knights that I wanted to use or ones that would work. And I don't, but I think I'm gonna have to go through um, more um, methodically and, um, and make sure that I don't, in fact, have them. I've got to look for a couple of other things anyways. i got to pack a sheep that uh, we're going to have to work into this army for the camp and stuff. So i got to find it. So before I go and order tomorrow, uh, I'm going to make sure today that I don't have the knights because it would just be silly. I mean, I've got, I picked up the my uh, big box that I have of empty lead and uh, unpainted lead, my lead mountain, and it's probably... I don't know, 80 pounds, it's, it's, it's just massive. 
and to not have them in there which is kind of strange so got lots of knights I just don't have any knights that would be appropriate um, that I'd be happy with for this period you know I'm gonna paint three knight figures and I'm probably gonna spend um, maybe short of 20 hours painting them so I want to paint the right guys you know um, it takes just as long to paint the wrong ones as the right ones, so you might as well get the right ones. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to take these pins here, all right? And yes, these are sharp as hell, but we're going to fix that. We're going to need eight of them. Three, four, five. I don't think there's 40 in here. I think I got gypped. Oh, well. I didn't count. It's not that big a deal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And then all we're going to do with them, and these are, you know, these will, you'll draw blood with these things. Okay. It's actually nice that they come in a little snap-on container. So if I ever use these things up, you got a nice container to put some things in. So this is uh, Dritz. And it's just a fabric store. You know, you walk in there and, uh, you know, you'll be the only guy in there. And <laughs> just go and find pens and... And buy them. I actually could have spent a lot of time in there. There's a lot of cool stuff in there. So, all right, let's put these guys off to the side. And we know we're going to have to do this anyway. So let me get my little file. I have my little metal file here. And all I'm going to do is run this across the edge of them. Let's... Yeah, that's it. And these are stainless steel. I tried using brass or something like that, but they end up bending. These will never bend, ever. So, you don't have that problem. And this is the same method that I use for my, uh, my carriage. I replaced some uh, lances on them, and um, I used these type of pins on them, and it worked just fine. Now, if you don't do what I'm doing, you're going to regret it, and you're probably going to get some weird disease from somebody, some blood-borne disease, because they will draw blood. But I did this uh, on one of the first armies that I did, the the, uh, uh, the my Armenians. My, Armenians cata my Armenian cataphracts have lances like this, and... Um, I've played, they're my most played army. I've played over 70 games with them. And um, and I've never poked myself. So it doesn't take much. Okay, that part's done. All right, now I'm happy with the pike length that these came in. So I literally took the box of these figures in my pocket and took to the craft store. And sometimes there's there's a pike that's that's molded. There's that damn app again. Amazon keeps stopping. I don't even have it open. So um, the uh, oh, enjoying your day off. Perfect. Hopefully you have more than just one day off. That's uh, that's pretty lame to have only one day off in a week. So. Okay, so this one's, yeah, this is um, miscast. So I'm going to measure here and let me, uh, let me show you what I use to snip the back of it is. It's, this is kind of like overkill. This is like using a howitzer to uh, take out an anthill. But, um, but it's what I have. I actually bought this for another purpose, but this is... This is, will cut through anything. And it's just a matter of just to coming in like this. Now, this side also has burrs. So we're going to do the same thing to the other side. But we're going to make sure that we get them to the right, right size first. So um, we're going to save those little, we're going to save those balls. We might have a use for them. And this is, I believe this is stainless steel. So like I said, these aren't going to bend. 
Um, Now, if these pikes have been in good shape and maybe of a harder alloy, I probably wouldn't replace them at all. I'd probably just kind of run with it. It's not like I'm replacing them on purpose. But um, I've got two of them that broke off and they're figures I want to use because this is a pack of 10. These are the old Gladiator figures, which were Black Hat. And now that I understand they're Gladiator again. This is code MED27. And they're Scottish pikemen. They come 10 to a pack, which is kind of an unusual number to have. Um, but um, so we're going to look at the poses. We did this last night in the middle of a video, but uh, I didn't leave them set up. So we've got uh, this is one. This is one pose. And then this is another one. And I need eight of these guys. So um, I want to make sure that I have a variety of, of poses for this. One of these there was five of the pose, and it must be this one here. Exactly right. Okay. So we have two that are automatically broken. So these are going to be my guinea pigs. We're going to do these guys first because if something happens and it goes wrong, I still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I got eight guys with pipes that I could make work. Okay. Um, now, the two that are the most difficult to work with are the two guys that broke off because you can see the pipe goes right up against the face. Okay. So... We're gonna, we're gonna mess with that. Uh, ideally, in a perfect world, uh, if I'm gonna have eight guys with pikes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so these two guys, for the moment being, we're not going to plan on using. Okay, and that's so I have a variety of poses. Now, I don't think that the angle that these pikes are at are gonna be an issue with another unit in front of them. Um, so, um, cause that's like a, that's a problem with some figures that they don't, uh, they don't mesh really well. So we're going to take one of these guys as a guinea pig. All right. And, um, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. You just used to be able to get iron pins, which I preferred. You could just flatten the heads of spear points. You are using needles for pikes. Makes a bit annoying to pick up the figs. Reason do not use steel pikes. The ones from... Any reason I don't use them? Well, okay, every time I've tried to order the Zyston ones, they're always out of stock. Always. I mean, it was, it's the, you know, so I've just gotten out of the habit of not using them. Uh, and Donington's excruciatingly expensive uh, to order from us in the States. So, but the Zyston ones I've tried getting, they're just too expensive. Um, and look, I could just go to the store and get them. I'm going to paint like it has a head on it anyway, so... Um, they turn out just fine. Um, it's just availability. So, um, all right. So let's get our exacto knife and see if I can uh, murder myself uh, on live video. All right. Let's jack my chair up because I had it jacked all the way down for painting. All right. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is. Let's uh, let's get let's get some tools out of here. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be an issue, but as you can see, I've already laid out a couple of backup plans I have for myself in case this doesn't work. Okay, here's an old pair of uh, toenail clippers that I use specifically for this stuff to make this cutting stuff easier. Maybe jack the chair up too much. There we go. All right, so we're going to try to take off as mo most of this as we can. Um, and then where is my pin vise? With, I believe this is the thinnest one I have. And let's see how this compares with the thickness of this. Yeah, it's almost the same, so. All right. So let's go in there. Let's have a sip of some motivational juice. And um, and get to it. And I believe this is a softer alloy. So it should be pretty easy to cut into. Huh. 
Look at that. I just lost the tip of the... Of that. Let's see if we can't. Like I said, this is going to be the difficult one. The other one won't be so bad. Okay. Pretty much done here. Now we got some on the face. Now some of this, if I don't do a perfect job of this, it's not a big deal because it's going to be covered up by the pipe that's going in its place. I actually didn't know I had a thicker one. Where is the one I was just using? Jeez, um, I don't have very many things here and I already lost it. Here it is. Durr. Okay. That's the thing about uh, this alloy is real easy to work with compared to if it was actual metal. Like a... Okay, that's not perfect, but that's, that should work pretty well. And um, now we're going to go in and, and drill. Now I'm going to actually leave the existing shaft down here at the bottom because what I plan on doing is drilling into there and uh, it'll just end up going through that so uh, that's my plan now the only catch is going to be i'm using the thinnest one i have i'm pretty sure this is the smallest one that i have i'm going to check in one other place so i don't have a way of doing like a pilot hole or anything like that and i'm i don't want to go and, and get another one of these just for yuck so it's a little matchbox i use for my yeah i think this one is is the same size that's bigger so the smallest one I have is the one I'm using so and this is the last time I did uh, this on my quarry I used the um, I use the same thing so um, Yeah, okay, so let me see here. Da, da, da. Mike says, any tips on basing? I saw that you use resin sand, but can't find any on Amazon uh, CA for a good price. Know of any alternatives I could find locally at a hardware store or something? So there's a, a chain store here called Michael's, a craft store that used to carry it. That's where I picked it up. Um, there might You might have to do a uh, search for resin sand Liquitex and see if someone else carries it. When I reordered it, I reordered it from Amazon, and it was, I picked it up at the store when I bought it around $10. Now, I know the price of it's gone up to maybe like 12 but I ended up having to buy mine for close to 20 you know, with the shipping and everything, so. Um, the last time I bought, I bought it from Amazon one time. This and I bought it one in the store. Then the next time I needed to buy it, the store didn't carry it anymore. So I had to buy it from Amazon and paid more for it. And I just recently bought another one and I had to buy it from an art supply place. I don't remember which one it is. Um, you might want to search on Amazon in, um, for it and then see other vendors and see if they give you uh, other vendor options for that. Let's, uh, let's do one thing. Let's... Uh, Let's get a replacement one of these, and where are we? Here we go. And my area is pretty neat, so see me juggling through stuff. It's um... all right. That one's got an actual tip. Uh, 
let's uh, let's put this one in. All we're interested in is the very end here. And we're just going to put in the pilot hole. Unfortunately, I'm doing this on the most difficult figure to, to work with because of the proximity that this drill is going to be to the face. So, um, yeah, this might actually not work on this figure because the hand is kind of small. I've got other pipe men I could use that aren't this brand. Uh, I just know that these guys have not. I like these figures, even they're a little they're a little weird, um, but they don't have a big showing on the internet. So uh, I could do them with Essex figures, but um, I just decided not to do that because I'd like to use these figures for uh, for a change. Yeah, and I can't drill in from the bottom because this uh, this stand is blocking it. Yeah, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. I'm going to end up having to drill out that whole hand. All right, so let's punt. All right. This poor guy's got a thumb that's sticking out. And I wish it wasn't there. Worst case scenario, he loses a thumb, the poor bastard. Oh, sorry, dude. Now, I'm going to actually take this little bit of the shaft and I'm going to cut into it, slicing all the way through. bit of flash on these figures. These are the old gladiator figures, which like I said, they they were until a couple years ago black hat. They were probably black hat for about 10 years. Um, and um, and now they've reverted to being called gladiator. And I want to say they're being carried by fighting 15s. Uh, but I also last time I checked their website, they um, they weren't listing them. Their website wasn't working, so I don't know if uh, they're shut down for COVID or something like that. Anyhow, let's take.
take out more of this stuff here. Have a, a clear path. Sometimes you just got to be patient with this stuff, you know. It's uh, it's not a quick fix. Okay. We should be able to go all the way through. Let's get this starter hole in it. Ah, shit fell on me. And like I said, if this gives me, if this ends up giving me too much trouble, then the hell with it. We'll just uh, we'll use the Essex guys. I just didn't want to do that because I don't really like the shields that the Essex guys have on them. They're a little too uh, they're a little too big for my taste. So I may end up having to go that route. Because the other thing is, you make these figures look, look all nice and everything, and then what ends up happening is you. Um, Uh, your pipe breaks and you have all that effort that you did and it didn't do you any good. Yeah, this, this, is, this is getting to be more trouble than it's probably worth. I've had these figures for probably 15 years. Got them for a Falkirk project that uh, we're going to work kind of in, as our gaming group as a, for like a big battle, but that never materialized. Come out the other side. going to have to take some of this excess so that it can fit through the other hand. I haven't given up yet. It's just a shame you can't do something like this with like say um, a Dremel because it's way too, I mean I know you can slow it down and everything but I don't, I don't have one of those Dremels you can slow down that much. So I would end up, uh, it would be overkill on this. We're gonna give this one guy a shot. And if it doesn't work, then we'll just go a different direction. Not a big deal. But the alloy that these guys have, it's, um, it's probably not gonna last. So after that one guy worked, I'm like, okay, let's try this figure. Cause there's, I'm gonna have three of them in this pose anyway. And I got some extras, so. We'll give that a shot. Okay. Okay, we're getting closer. So you take some of this material in between because so you could line up this one, it goes through here to line up with the other hand.
This is why I've never tried swapping heads in this scale, well, in any scale. Okay, could probably do it right there. Let's give it a whirl. Let's do one thing. Let's get rid of this right here. Well, it went through, but I think this was, there was a natural hole through through here. Let's just take a look at one of these. That would probably work just fine. I think this pike is kind of low, actually. I don't know if it's going to be an issue for another unit in front of them. Eh, it might be. It might be just fine. Yeah. Obviously this and this is a little long, we gotta take some of it off, but and I've chipped out stuff on there, but man, you can't tell that I did that. I think that worked out pretty well. What do you guys think? Let's see, no hobby stores or craft store in my area. Punt, it's fourth down already. <laughs> Well, now I can go back. You know, just don't, you know, the thing is, is with this hobby is if you get hung up on something, move on to something else. Just don't sit there and just cogitate and not get everything else, anything else done, so. Let's move on to another one. I, I feel pretty good about that. Now, let's, uh, what was this guy that we were having difficulty with that we punted on? We're not going to give up on this guy. I know what to do. Let's come in here. Take this little bit off. Because I like, I, I like painting figures that you don't see a crap ton of them on the internet. So I'm not a big fan of Essex because Essex has been a long time. They're a staple. And a lot of their figures look very similar to other figures that they make. So there's not any kind of allure to painting them because they look just like every other army. That's not that's not a gripe against them. I mean, they're, they're, the sculptor is very consistent. I love how these figures look. Um, you know, he did a great job on those. But they have the similar style of so many of their other armies. So um, these guys don't have that. Um, I would say that those are better sculpted than these. But these have a different look, so I wanted to do that. And um, they have different shields and stuff on them, so... Come in here. Want to make sure we don't take this too far. So we don't want to take a chunk out of the shield. So just gotta be patient, wiggle it in there. Okay. Work that out. Now, where is the top of this hand? The top of this hand is about here. Let's clean this up a little bit. Now,
problem is this hand's kind of small. It's cheek towards the inside. Now we'll go more vertical. Okay, went through there. It's lined up almost perfectly on the one underneath. I know some people are thinking this is just way too much patience for me. I can't I can't handle doing this. Okay, we went through the bottom. Let's bring it back out. Now let's see what we got. Dun, 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 dun. Top here. Go through the bottom. Look at that. That's why you punt, so you can score later. Yeah, there we go. Now we do have to trim some of the ends of this off. Maybe not much, maybe like an eighth of an inch, so that it would be the same length. Um, I may just leave them this length. Um, you know, they are pikes, so uh, if he's six foot tall, the pike is, let's see here. The pike is, 12. it's not too long. I mean, unless it's, unless it's supposed to be like a 12 foot pike, if it's any longer than 12, then the height's about right. I think we're gonna leave these guys as is. Look at that. Awesome. Now, I am a little concerned about the length of this pike that it could impact figures that they're fighting against. So let's take another, let's do a couple, let's do a test here. Do we have a stand? Let me get a uh, 40 by 15. You can put these on 40 by 40s, uh, 40 by 20s as well, but I don't rule that way. I like the, I like the heavies on the 15s. I think they look better. I know I got 15s, here we go. Getting low. Send an order for to Mr. Litko here shortly. Let's go ahead and grab a couple of them, leave them out. We're gonna need two of those. I know they can have three pipemen and a pipe general, but I'm not gonna build a pipe general for this army. They, uh, they need some mounted troops. That's just uh, how I choose. There's also not a uh, foot general that I'm dying to figure that I'm dying to use. So, all right, so let's take a look at this. And let's take a Saloy, figuring there's gonna be four of these guys on here. Yeah, that's gonna be a problem. That's gonna be a problem at the angle. Now, I will probably would put them as far back as they could go. Hmm. Oh well, I'll have to think about that. No, yeah, there's no problem there. Okay, well we'll worry about that uh, when we get there. Uh, Alright, so let's put these little guys back. 
So that's what we're going to do with all these figures, okay? We, uh, we tested this. It seems to work. I'm pretty happy with it. And, um, you know, we've got how many guys with a pike upright? We got that guy's upright. This one's upright. And um, these other ones do not. So obviously these two uprights will be on two different stands. Um, but anyhow, so we know what that is. That's how I do pikes. And um, I don't see any issue why that's not going to work out the rest of it. We're not going to bore you guys with the with that so so what do we do now so let's look at these guys here and see even with uh, a coat of flat on them they're still a little glossy so we're going to uh, take our flat clear lacquer finish and we're going to give these guys a coating so then we'll let that dry and then we can go ahead and um, pop them off and assemble them on the three stands. Oh, this, these are the same stands too. I guess I need to get more out because I'm going to need two for the pikemen and I'm going to need three for um, I'm going to need three for these blade stands. Oh, I'm, getting, I'm getting low. For some reason, I decided to go ahead and, and put the magnets on some of them already. It's unusual. One, two, three, four, five. So once you put them on there, they're cut to the same size. It seems like this batch of the heavy-duty uh, magnet stands came out a little rougher than usual so um, what I do is uh, just run this along the edge so that the magnet doesn't stick out past the edge of the stand But these are two different items. So if you order them from Litgo, you've got to buy them separately. So there's one down. There's another one. Yeah, I don't know if you can see, they're kind of, see they're cut the right size, but they're, they're rough cut, the, the, the magnet part, they're like jagged. And I don't know why that happened with this batch. Maybe the, they just had a bad batch of them, maybe the heavy duty magnets are more difficult to cut out from the machine when they make them. I'm not sure, it's not a big deal. Um, see, that's why I don't want to sponsor because I can just tell you how it is. <laughs> um, but it's, it's not really very inconvenient. It's a lot less inconvenient than uh, cleaning flash off figures, which I absolutely hate doing. I don't think, that the, I don't think that's part of my job is to do that. I think the figure should come without flash on them. But um, I detest cleaning flash off figures. Okay. And then one of these. Okay, so there's the five stands. 
And like I said, I could have put them on 40 or at 20s as well, because that is an option now with DBA 3.0. But I want them, I want the pipes and blades consistent with all the other 20 armies that I had prior to having access to that. So, all right, so we're gonna set these guys off to the side. Um, let's mix this stuff up. We have a special brush that we use for this. Let me find out where it is. Uh, Cause I don't wanna get any paint or something on here. I wanna make sure this is as clear as possible. And where is she? I believe it's this one right here. I believe it's this one. Forged in Battle is doing some new 15 millimeter Dark Ages medieval stuff. Take, take a look at it, Tony, I have. Um, there's a couple of companies that arrived on the scene too late for me. What I mean by that is I already have a mountain of lead. Um, they are Legio Heroica, Kurasan, and um, Forged in Battle. They just arrived 10 years too late. Uh, if they'd have been 10 years ago, I would have bought their stuff. I mean, I, I love the, if I have to, if I am desperate to paint an army that I don't have already the figures for, yeah, I'll probably go to Forged in Battle. I've seen them, they look beautiful. And yes, I saw the the Dark Ages have been uh, I had, they had put them on YouTube. Um, they had put those uh, figures on YouTube over a year ago when they were making the sculpts, and I had been I had been keeping my eye on them, but unfortunately, it's just too late. You know, it's too late. I'm not going to replace figures I already have with them because um, that's just throwing money at money at a problem, and um, I. If it was an army I didn't already have, then yeah, I would I would probably go that route. But um, I just don't see. Now, Kurosan kind of did the same thing. Uh, they came out with Ottomans after I was done with my Ottomans. And I love their Ottomans, but it's like, dude, too late. You know, you should have come out with them a year before and I would have bought them. So, uh, but I understand they're not making them for me. They're for other people. So um, they've kind of done that with several other figure lines, which is weird. They, um, I did my... my Wars and suddenly they come out with Italian Wars. I'm like, sons of bitches. I said, well, I'm not going to rebuy my figures that I just did. So um, it's just one of those things. It's just, it's, it's just annoying that uh, that's happened three or four times actually with Kurosan. Um, so I think if I have to buy another army, I should buy a, an army that Kurosan's already made so I know they won't come out with figures for them after I'm done with them. <laughs> but I have lots of figures that I'm perfectly happy with that will paint up well. I mean, as you can see, I'm really happy with these Essex guys. These figures have been around for at least, I would say, what, 30 years? You know, and they paint up just fine. So uh, if somebody comes up with gallo, uh, more uh, gallo glass, I'm not going to drop what I'm doing and paint them. You know, I've, I'm going to paint other armies, so... Um, and I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of hooked on painting these these figures that are less than stellar and making them look stellar. Um, it, it it's a lot of fun, you know. Like, or as I like to say, figures that don't get any love, and then uh, painting up, paint them up with some love. So, kind of hooked on that. But yes, I have seen those Dark Ages, and they look awesome. Uh, the one exception I will do is I have an Old Glory army to do um, early Imperial Romans on. Now, they're not really on my list because everybody and their mother has early Imperial Romans. But if I decide I have to paint early Imperial Romans, I'm probably not going to play the Old Glory figures. I'll probably get the Forged and Battle ones because they look awesome. Um, But I'm not really turned off by the fact that the Forged in Battle figures come in huge sets. Now, I was tempted to, um, as Mitch already has Normans, but I was tempted to possibly get uh, 
some Anglo-Saxons, so I could do Anglo-Danes through... Um, Uh, like Alfred's army as well, and just do a big morph of both of the periods because I think you could probably use those forged in battle for both of them because those forged in battle Anglo-Saxons look... I mean, that's an army that doesn't interest me very much, okay, because that's not really my background. And I know you people in the UK love Anglo-Saxon stuff generally, but that, that doesn't appeal to me. But those figures are so awesome looking that all of a sudden it appeals to me. <laughs> uh, so... Um, that does tempt me. Uh, I'm just not really in the. I'm not really interested in buying more figures at this time because I, I've got. I want to whittle down my pile a little bit. Um, I've got lots of figures that I want to use for different projects. So, um, but I have seen several things on there that have tempted me. So, and the big figure packs aren't really a problem because. There's many, I don't mind having extra figures, and uh, there's many armies that you would be very uh, useful to have uh, those big figure packs. Like if I was doing you know, those Anglo-Saxons, I mean, hell, they got a shitload of, uh, of spear and blade. You know, you could do one stand of the, one pack of the Huskarls, and you could knock out all three stands of the blades for those guys. So I may have to go back and do some more of what I'm doing right now. But the problem is, is that this stuff is so thick and I paint so thin that if I go over the same spot more than once, this gets tacky really quick and it could pull off the bottom layer of paint. And I'm telling you that because it's happened before and I, I want to avoid that. So if I don't get all the shiny spots in this one pass, then I'll come back and, um, and touch it up. But, you know, I'm done painting these guys. I don't want to have to redo anything that I've already done on them. Okay. Now, those will dry for a little bit. I don't know what this, how long it says for this to dry, but I'm not waiting a freaking day for it. I think that uh, later this evening we can, we can mess with them. Or certainly in a couple hours I can see if I need to apply another level of it so we're just going to and all I use this this cleaner for I guess this is cleaner slash thinner is uh, only thing I use this thing for is just to clean this one brush that I use for this product because you don't want any tint on this because um, just imagine if you use uh, you use something that had red all of a sudden my entire figure is going to be tinted red a little bit I want to avoid that so and this, I've had this uh, for a long time, and I think now I've gotten down to about, maybe I got a third left. Um, but anyhow, uh, sadly, they do not do prepackaged DBA armies like Essex and other companies do. I wouldn't care if they did prepackaged armies because when you do prepackaged armies, that means somebody else gets to pick what figures are in the, ar the army. I, that doesn't uh, bother me any. Um, yes, they're expensive, especially for us in the States, but um, that doesn't really... The reason I wouldn't be getting them is because I already have like all the figures. Like Arabs, like I just got done painting a big Arab army and they come up with Arabs. Well, you know, I mean, they're beautiful. Don't get me wrong, but um, I don't think I'll be getting those because um, I know a couple people that have several Ar Arab armies, so... Um, but yeah, they look beautiful. Ashram, hello. How, how, how are you there in Italy? What am I doing today? Well, I'm drilling out some pikes because I realized I didn't have the knights that I wanted to use. So, uh, I was drilling some pikes and having a little bit of a hiccup, but I think we, uh, surmounted that. Uh, let's go back and do, uh, let's see. We have a different pose with a different guy. Let's try this one. I don't know what kind of a hat this guy has. He has a hat almost like a, one of those Sassanid hats. Those little round caps. I'm pretty sure that's metal. I don't know. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go watch Braveheart. And I'm going to paint these guys just like the guys of Braveheart. What do you guys think? Think that'll be a good idea? <laughs> just paint them blue. 
just completely blue. Um, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna get a pose that I've already. Let's do this other. Let's do the other guy that, that broke off. Um, talking about blue guys, I saw some somebody that had posted some pictures of some Celts that they did, and they have a unit of guys that fought naked, and. I don't know what their name is or how to say it, but they started with this G. I'm going to say they're Gesati or something like that. I'm not looking at it, so I have no idea how, how to pronounce them or whatever. I think they're G-A-E-S-E-T-I. And they basically fight naked. And I saw somebody that posted some pictures, you know, on the, on the, on the internet of their version of them. And they were painted totally blue. So they're blue and naked like Smurfs. I'm like... Man, that's really tempting to do that. Because that's cool, you know. Um, that's different, you know. Stuff to laugh at, so. Um, yeah, it's, I am replacing the pikes. It seems straight enough, but the problem is, is that the pikes are uh, going right by the faces. So it's a little challenging, but uh, hey, I already do, did two successfully. And I think it turned out pretty well, so. Um, it just took me longer than I, I was expecting it to take. So, um, that's one thing. If you expect something to be a bitch and it's a bitch, no problem. But if you expect it to be easy and it turns into a bitch, that's the problem. Like, I'm, I wasn't mentally prepared for this. But these guys are over here drying their final coat. And, um, one of my favorite things is when it's time to pop these guys off and then I get to assemble them how they're going to fit on the stands. Figure that out because I don't pre-figure that out. And that's kind of a fun little puzzle to do. The first army that I did my feudal Spanish, I had figured out who was going to be on what stand first. And, oh, this guy popped right off without anything on his face. Awesome. It was just that one that was difficult. Um, I had figured out what, who was going to be what color. And I had written down here, like on my mounted, I had, fig I had written down, you know, blue or red is what their dominant color was going to be and figured out what and put a number on what nightstand they were going to be on. I did that all ahead of time and that just really slows the process. You know, just kind of run with it, have a variety of stuff and then, um, and then put them together at the, in the final stage um, is a lot easier. So it looks like only that first guy was a bear. This guy, this came right off. Okay. One of my favorite sayings that I coined is persistence is the key to victory. If you give up, you're never gonna, you're never gonna accomplish what you wanna accomplish. So, well, also don't find any losing battles, but so you gotta kind of gauge and see if it's something that is, you're going to be able to be successful at before you you don't want to fight a losing battle. That's, uh, it's this top hand that's tricky because i got to go far enough in that it'll hold together while I drill through it, but then I'll be able to bend and line up with the other one. So this isn't that stressful. You just got to be patient. Like I said, what is the worst thing that could happen? I got to use the Essex figures that I have for the pikemen. Whoop dee, right? That's that's not that bad of a back backup plan. The only thing I don't like about the Essex figures is the Essex figures seem to have the spear in a very dominant role, almost like they're like a, in shield wall. So they've got like pikes and they're in shield wall. So I didn't really like that look. Um, I prefer these guys that are kind of marching on the go um, with their shield if they have it. Uh, their smaller shields, well, oh, this one's a pretty good size, but they're smaller shields and, um, and they're just kind of slung over their shoulder or something like that for later use, not, 
not doing both. I didn't really like the shield wall with pikes. Yeah, this thing's slipping on me. I do need to order a set of these um, of these little drill bits that are smaller, so I could do a really small one, use it as a pilot hole, and go in. But I forget. I forget to do that. It's too late now. I need it now. I do need to check this out this evening and make sure that I do in fact not have the knights that are appropriate to use before I go and order them. So if I do, it looks like the guys that uh, I'm probably going to order from is Old Glory, some of their Crusader Knights. So they seem to be, you know, they're like the late Crusade, so almost like the um, Richard the Lionheart. Well, actually later than that. They've got the right type helms for, for this early 13th century, uh, uh, early 14th century guys. So... I don't mind having extra of those because I can work them into the feudal English army as well. So, um, whenever I get around the building, those guys. Okay, so this one went through. Let's line this up with this one and go through there. Yeah, it broke through his arm. That's all right. You can, what I've had to do before is I've had to put a dollop of epoxy there and just paint it like he has a hand and no one's the wiser. see what we got here. Let's pull this out. Oh, we got some flash here we need to take care of. Okay. And then we got this hand that opened up. But it's still there. Let's see what this looks like. not get drilled all the way through on the bottom yeah okay well, why is it not going all the way through okay there we go so yeah I popped a tiny little bit through through the edge but when I epoxy that because I end up I won't super glue these in I'll epoxy them because the epoxy gives a better uh, a better um, a thing anyways, then I'll just paint over that. You won't even be able to tell. So bam, here's another guy. Done. All right, where's, um, we're working on this guy that had, oh, we have another vertical guy? Oh yeah, this guy's a little different. Let's go ahead and do all the vertical guys. I didn't realize I had three guys that are vertical. That's cool. Bye-bye. Um, Come in here. Only one pose of this guy, so we want to make sure we add him in there for variety, you know? Because these guys are not going to be fancy dressers. They're not going to all be in this uh, yellow saffron color ro uh, robe type thing. You know, they're going to have uh, some other rustic type colors, but, um, you know, they're, they're, these guys aren't high rollers or anything, so.
And after we're done with this one, we're probably going to stop. I got to take care of some laundry and I'm um, going to be out for a little bit. And um, I'm sure I'll probably come back uh, when we do the pop off of these guys later today. So. Um, Let's take this one little, you know what? Let's just break this into little pieces and we can chop it up and take care of it. Oh boy, I got a lot of a lot of comments here. Let's see. Fengal Wolf, hey there. How would you ever get a Scotsman to let go of anything? Yeah, I don't uh I don't know. Yeah, I hear that that's the that's kind of the yeah, I'm replacing these pikes because a couple of them were broken and they look very flimsy. So, um, do I play any skirmish games? Yes, when I play World War II, I play World War II skirmish, but uh, I play, I haven't played in probably 15 years. I, uh, I accept no substitutes for World War II gaming. So, uh, what I like to play is super anal retentive and uh, you don't get much accomplished very Often. I play a, a set of rules called the face of battle, which are out of print now, but um, yeah, I, I'm very particular about what World War II rules I play. What varnish do I use? I'm settled on Vallejo brush on matte varnish after having a lot of frosting from Army Painters Spray Matte. I've never gotten any frosting and it's humid as crap here. Um, it is just as hot in Florida as it is, is in Italy. I don't know, maybe you got a bad batch. I've heard people do it, so. Um, yes, I recommend varnishing absolutely to take care of the shine and also to protect them. So what I do is I do a spray gloss, I do a spray flat, and then I do the brush on flat. And, um, you know, it makes a big difference. So, um, this reminds me of cutting out the pike blocks of my paper boys, medieval Scots. Yeah. The paper boy stuff is, um, nice. Peter Dennis, yeah, um, his artwork's pretty darn good. I mean, he's not um, Angus McBride, but nobody is Angus McBride. Um, I have several of Peter Dennis's stuff, and uh, yeah, he's pretty darn good. And, you know, those guys are really talented. Those of us that are just painting miniatures, I'm sorry, well, maybe I saw myself uh, less than I should, but... Um, this is freaking easy compared to people that are just painting stuff on a blank canvas. Come on, those guys are really talented. We're just paint by number flunkies, you know. Um, I really enjoy, um, you know, the stuff that those guys do is really amazing. So, um, is it time? Okay, all right. I'm being called. Uh, apparently, I have to chase down an ice cream truck or uh, it's actually what a gelato truck. Okay. All right, so we've got to go take care of that, do some laundry, and then I will be back uh, probably a couple, three hours. So check it out. Meanwhile, if you're subscribed to my channel, you would know when I come on. Come on. So make sure you do that so that you don't miss a minute. You never know what's going to happen next. I'm going to cut out some more pikes, and I might even have an injury live on the Internet. So uh, you guys might uh, be looking out for that. All right, folks, we'll catch you guys next time, and uh, happy painting. See ya!